Andy Johnson, Minnesota State University. We're looking at reading instruction for students with developmental cognitive disabilities and some specific strategies for instruction. First of all, you know, reading instruction. Reading is learning to create meaning with print. Much of reading instruction, quote unquote, really should be, from a teacher's point of view, is developing the creation or uh, the, the environment, the situations whereby students can learn to create meaning with print. Students don't learn to read because of us. Sometimes they learn to read in spite of us. But as teachers of literacy, we need to understand how literacy develops and know that we are creating conditions as much as we are teaching specifics. Hopefully that will make a little sense. But all children, whether they are students with developmental cognitive disabilities or preschool, kindergarten, first grade, need to interact with books and talk, talk, talk to children. Look there, look there, see that, what do you see? I like this part. Talk about, talk to, talk with, talk, talk. Reading, writing, speaking, listening are all literacy language processes that serve to reinforce each other. Talking as well reflects the social constructivist theory where students create meaning and negotiate meaning through interaction with other people. Communi uh, talk enables students at all levels in all topics to learn more and to learn more deeply. Instruction, preschool, kindergarten, first grade, students with DCD should be using a lot of big books and choral reading. Here is a big book. It is a book that is big. All students can see it. Uh, if they sit close enough, they should all be able to see the words. Choral reading, the teacher reads the book and then points to the words as she is reading. So they're reading it together. They learn that these Things on the page actually relate to a word, they mean something, and they begin to develop a sight word vocabulary, and they enjoy books. That is the big thing. With big books, you use a lot of echo reading. Notice the pointer here, all right, big books and charts. He, echo reading is the, the teacher reads a sentence, points to the story, and the children read it back. The ball is going high. Repeat, the ball is going high. So they echo it back and she points to the word. All right, that's echo reading. Core reading is let's read it together. You read and point together. Shared writing or the language experience approach. You have an experience and you ask students, you dictate it. Boys and girls, what did we do today? Who's got an idea? And you write it down. So you're creating a shared writing or a large poster version of a story. And then you read it back. You can use echo reading or choral reading or call on students. The genius of the language experience approach is that the words are within students' oral vocabulary and conceptual vocabulary. They know the words and the concepts. So they are recognizing words as opposed to sounding out new words for words and concepts that they don't understand. Word recognition. Classroom libraries. Good reading instruction. Preschool, kindergarten, first grade, students with DCD. You should have lots, oh, lots of good books available. How do you expect children to fall in love with books if you don't have books to fall in love with, if you have second-rate garage story books? Now, the thousands and thousands of dollars that are spent on commercial for-profit reading curriculums would be better spent on buying lots of good books. You'd spend far less money and you'd have far more literate human beings. Lots of good books lots of paper and pencils, lots of teacher professional development, so they keep learning and understanding new ways to teach literacy. Guided storytelling is where you read a book together. This is at the pre-conventional and emergent literacy levels. Parents do this a lot. They read a book, they stop and ask questions. Where's the bear? What do you think will hap happen next? This helps towards a movement towards what we call pretend reading where children can tell you the story or read you the story using just picture cues. And that's an important emergent literate behavior, emergent literacy behavior. And if you have kids at home, you should be doing this. 
kids in the preschool, kindergarten, and even first grade level, it's okay. Remember, reading is using, uh, reading is learning to use print text to create meaning. In the early stages, they may use more picture cues than letter cues, but they are creating meaning with text. Logo posters or environmental reading. Here, children are learning to read familiar words in a familiar context, things they see every day. Cheerios, okay, frosted flakes, caution, speed, limit. And again, learning letter sounds, learning sight words, and reading print that they will encounter. So not only do they see the words as you practice it, but they'll see it at home and in the grocery store and wherever. Predictable books and flip charts. A predictable book has a repeating phrase, good night moon, good night this, good night this, all right? It's predictable. So it's the same word and maybe an extra word at the end of the sentence. Lots of predictable books or predictable flip charts. A flip chart is something like this, and here children have written these sentences, or these are sentences that children have said. And you can have sentence strips uh, where children ha are all given different strips, and one at a time they have to come and they have to match the strip and put it in the right one. Or they're given a word and they have to put the word next to the word they see in the sentence. All right? Learning to create meaning with print, learning to recognize similar words. Lots of tricks. Here is a <laughs> predictable chart. Orange, orange, orange. Orange is what is what that spells. All right, using a lot of pictures, a lot of repeated words and phrases. Picture books or story maps. You read a picture book together and then you fill out a story map and you practice retelling the story using a story map. And a story map is any visual representation of the story. It can be like this using pictures or some other thing. But the child has read the book, right, a picture book, and then can use the story map to retell you the story. With younger children, you may use more picture cues than word cues. Ideally, you'd have a little bit of both. So we're gradually helping them develop. Predicting, group reading, all right? You're reading stories in group, and children are having a good time enjoying the enjoying the book, all right? Helping children fall in love with books is the number one task of a teacher. And you just stop at places. What do you think will happen next? Children make predictions based on what has happened in the past, and then let's read to find out. And any working with words, word walls, word sorts, onset rhyme, word building, any working. And with the sight words, most frequent words, doshless, whatever, the hundred most frequent words, ah, uh, the, in, but, it's okay to have flashcards there and to use old maid or go fish or concentration games using these most frequent words. Not one thing together, not one strategy, but all of these strategies are appropriate for students with developmental cognitive disabilities and by the way, are appropriate for all children.